back to No One Ask Us. I'm Craig Choate. That is Logan Lee. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. However you are consuming the content, we really do appreciate it. Uh, Like it, share it. Uh, Get more ears and eyes on us as we uh, get deeper into the summer because Lord knows we need more people need to hear what we have to say. Logan. (laughs) People are definitely missing out. They are. Those Those... those that are not participating in our weekly shenanigans are (laughs) definitely missing out on some high quality grade A entertainment. Those billions of people that are not the the 50 (laughs) that do listen, the other billions need to listen. Yeah. Um, You can find us at no one asked us pod on Twitter at Craig W. Choate at the Logan Lee. We also have a Gmail account. No one asked us 2021 at gmail.com. Like share our YouTube as well. This is episode 17. Uh, We are recording this on a Tuesday afternoon slash evening, kind of right in the middle of that afternoon evening window um 4 15 central time um how, how was the it's a little bit of a long week uh because normally yeah. we do this on sunday or monday it's tuesday how are things going midweek for you we're almost a hump day uh, that's yeah that's a good point no things are good things are good had a good weekend i uh, went back home i had a wedding in springfield uh, over the weekend so i was back down in your neck of the woods for a couple days um and yeah, just back up here coasting along. So uh, yeah, as you said, it's already almost Wednesday. And by the time this goes up, it will be Wednesday. So it will be. yeah, absolutely. How about you? Just had a good visit from my dad and brother. Yeah. Um, brother's in from Dallas. So he visited some friends in St. Louis for the weekend and then drove up this way and they just left, headed back down south. So good to see them. Got some Papa Dell's, some good Papa good Dell's pan pizza in my belly. I haven't so. had Papa Dell's in so long. My brother doesn't oh, know much about good. champagne, but that was his suggestion. And I, yeah. as we were, as we were eating, I took one bite and I was like, oh, that's a, this is a good call. Coleman. That's a this, good call. This is good. <laughs> so that's a good call. I need to get some good. Papa Dells in my life for sure. Yeah. yeah it's a good spot. Um, no more free, no more free plug plugs, plugs though. No more free plugs. Here we go. <laughs> ah, ah. All right, let's uh, start over here. Talking is hard. Let's, let's just Talking get right into it. Very hard. Um, not a whole lot of like big breaking news. We still don't have an Illini assistant coach. Um, eventually, we'll have one to talk who about. W- but who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> right. Who? It's been more than a month now. I think. I. I yeah, <laughs> I don't long, know. Like the longer you made it the goes, comments, the more I think it's Brian Randall who's that's, coaching with that's the Suns. My, that's but, my thoughts. Like it doesn't. Does that make a ton of sense? I don't know, but like I don't have any other reasons to think, unless it's some other coach that's still involved in an NBA team. Like I don't know. Yeah, it seems crazy, but maybe it's not. I mean, maybe that's where we're headed. It has to be at this point. Yeah. But didn't you uh, make the point it out over the weekend that they had just posted the yeah. job? Isn't that's that I right? Gonna, I read that. Yeah. That's what I was going to get to. I was just browsing. I don't know how I stumbled upon it. But I was looking and they posted the job opening on June 10th with the closing date of June 17th. And I, at first I freaked out. I was like, wait, why are they just now posting this job? It's been open for over a month. What's going on? And a couple people have made the point to me that that normally happens when someone has agreed to take the job. So someone will take the job and then they'll post it because they legally have to post the job. They'll take all these applicants who aren't even going to get looked at. Yeah. And then once the date, once the job closes is when you announce who got the job. That's what happened with Kentucky right. with Chin and Orlando. Like the day that the job closed or the next day they announced Chin and Orlando, even though everyone knew that those were the hires. Yeah. So the job posting closes the 17th. So maybe we'll know something Thursday or, or Friday, maybe sooner. No one knows. Um, but yeah, that's all that we got there. No update, but there is a big update for Illinois this week. A couple, actually we're going full capacity. The state of Illinois moved to phase five, which is full capacity um, on Friday. And so in the fall, we're going to have a full Memorial Stadium. Well, the ability to have a full Memorial Stadium. <laughs> I think it'll be full week zero. You think it'll be full? You think it'll be a sellout? I, I think if not full, it'll be damn near. I, I, I really do. I think people are going to be excited about a new era. They're going to be excited to get back to Memorial Stadium um I, I just I don't I mean who knows what happens with that game you know things could change with attendance wise if they don't look good for a few weeks and all that stuff but yep. I just I think that by because that's also September I mean it's not like it's it's right now I mean yeah Wrigley Field's jam-packed um every night but I would think so I think if it's not a total sellout it'll be pretty darn close I think a lot uh, of that when we get too, there 
would be who they're playing. They're playing Nebraska, right. who even when Nebraska is not good, they travel very right. well. Right. Um, the last couple of times they've come to Champaign, there has almost been more red in the stands than right. orange. So I agree with you. I think it'll be very, very close. You'll find me in the East Balcony, um, which I'm very excited about. And also, it is the first college football game. Well, FCS at least. I don't know when FBS starts or any D3 or whatever. It is the first FCS football game F- of BS. FBS. <laughs> FBS, Division One, Division One A, whatever you want to call it, it is the first one of the entire season, not just the Big Ten, not in right. the state of Illinois. The entire season, the noon kickoff on August, I believe, twenty eighth. I think that's right. I, so yeah, that's all eyes good. are going to be on Champagne. There's only four or five games that weekend, so it is. It's a big game, and I, I agree. I don't know that they'll get a sellout, but I agree that it will be a very, very good crowd because people have been waiting. I mean, they haven't been able to go to a Illinois sporting event yeah. since I think Illinois basketball beat Iowa like March 9th of 2020. So um, more than a year it's been. So I, I think it's going to be fun and exciting. Still waiting to see if college game day comes here. I don't know if they will because yeah. it's a Fox game, but they've done they've done their show from a game that wasn't on ESPN before, right? They have, yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't think there's another game – on the schedule i could see i could see the fox crew traveling yeah since it's a big 10 game and it's a it's i mean is there the fox crew is a a big they're a big name crew if they use the same ones as i mean they got to replace urban won't have urban meyer yeah but Um, yeah (laughs) but it's reggie bush brady quinn and matt liner i think those are three of the biggest college football names from the last decade so so it's fun um but yeah it's across all sports too this isn't just football this is Basketball is going to be full. Um, Huff Hall for volleyball can be full capacity. So it's exciting times and, and it it's another step to normal. Right. Um, I noticed I noticed it this weekend um, or this week. My, my brother was in town last night, my dad, and we went out to eat. And, you know, downtown Champaign was packed. And I mean, it, mm-hmm. we, we did eat outdoors, but he had to go in to make the reservation and people were filling up restaurants again without masks. Right. And you're not seeing as many masks. So Numbers are looking good, so it's a step in the right direction. How are things over Indiana and South Bend? Um, I mean, we've been – Indiana in general has been a little ahead of Illinois in all facts, facets of this thing. Yeah. Um, we went to eat dinner um, at a – we've been going to, you know, eating dinner, you know, indoors and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's been limited capacity, but we went to a restaurant – uh, that we usually go to pretty quick, frequently a couple weeks ago. Uh, and that was the first time I'd been in there when it was back to full. I mean, it yeah. wasn't, they weren't spaced out and we were right next to people. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice that we're, we're definitely going that direction. Um, you know, it's going into gas stations and things and not having to wear masks. And yeah. sometimes I still do, but you know, when, if I don't forget my, if I forget my mask in my car or something, I, I'm not really concerned about it. So yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely nice. Definitely excited for, uh, you know, sports and full capacity. Wrigley was, I mean, we'll get to the baseball stuff. I know yep. you're not thrilled to talk about it, but I mean, Wrigley was bumping this weekend. Yep. Um, so yeah, beer, it's, it's, beer it's snakes and all. <laughs> that was, that was the, that was a highlight. That yeah, was definitely a highlight. That was the highlight for me. Cause there was nothing on the field. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went to the grocery store for the first time Thursday, but didn't wear a mask. Um, I always still have a mask with me in case yeah. I'm asked, I can pull it out, but went to the grocery store, didn't have a mask, went out to eat, didn't have a mask. So went out to lunch just now, yeah. didn't have a mask. So, um, it feels good. It's, it's weird. It, it is very weird, but, um, but I like it. So, um, um, Notre Dame, have they announced what they're going to do? Yep. Are they they're going to be full. They're going to be full. They announced I, that just a few days, I think maybe a week or so before, uh, Illinois yeah. did. So yeah, yeah Notre see... Dame football is going to be, will be jam packed this year as well yeah yeah i don't see many conferences or schools having limits anymore no i don't think think i think it's going to be full across the country which is yeah fantastic um so not just in the stands but on the field illinois getting some help um i don't know if you had known this or if the general public knew this but mike epstein hadn't been with the program uh since the season ended in december Um, running back for illinois um I think he's going to be a junior or he's an upperclassman. I don't know with all the weird roster rules from last year. I don't know how they're going to classify people, but I think he's got a couple of years left at Illinois. Um, I think Bob Osmussen from the news Gazette was the first to break the news. And then Brett Bielema confirmed it last week that Epstein is returning to the team and will be a part of the Illini, which 
running back's not thin. It's a pretty deep position. But I think Epstein could be the most talented player in the room. So yeah. that's a huge boost for that program. He's he's probably my favorite running back. I like the way he plays. I like the way he runs. Um, I also really like Chase Brown, though, as well. I think that would be a good one-two punch. I mean, Reggie Love, Jakari. I mean, there's a ton of running backs in there. Chase Hayden now. So he just, he only depth he only adds more depth and strengthens that room. But I think it's a big boost that Bielema was able to to get him back here because there was talks that he wasn't going to come back to the program. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean it's absolutely huge. That's going to be um, with with Bielema's style and uh, the run game is going to be an instrumental part of that offense. And having so much talent there in the backfield, uh, it's going to be great. I mean he's a he's a pass catcher. He's a blocker. He can run. I mean he's. He's, you know, as you said, probably the probably the best of the group. So uh, that's probably going to be the the strength of of the team, maybe in general, especially the offense. So it's great to have any amount of talent back. Uh, but yeah, definitely hearing that 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 was for sure happening was uh, very very nice to hear as we get closer to football season. Yeah, I don't know if he's back on campus yet, but I know a lot of the athletes are starting to to trickle right. in. I know a lot of the basketball players have been posting on their social medias that they're back on campus and. And they're making their way in here. I'm pulling Mike's stats up for to give us some reference of how he's done the first couple of years. I think he's played for three years, but he's also dealt with injuries. Right. Which, oh, he's played for four. Okay. So he's played four seasons, but 2019 was kind of a lost season because I think he got hurt really early. Um, but he, and that's the thing. He's never had a great year because he always gets some sort of injury. So 2017, um, 346 yards and three touchdowns. 2018, 411 yards and three touchdowns. 2019 was the year I think he tore his ACL. It might have been the first game, maybe like Kent State or something. I remember he tore his ACL because yeah. I remember I got the shot or I, I got a picture. I wasn't shooting the game, but I was there, and I got a picture of him getting driven off in the cart um, with his head. He had his head down with a towel over his head. Um 45 yards, I think that had to have been only one game. And then last year, uh, 2020, he had 367 yards with four touchdowns. So he's got 10 touchdowns and a little over 1,000 yards for his career in three-plus seasons. So yeah. um, last year doesn't count, so he could still technically be a junior, I think. And I, I was able just, to get a medical, medical red shirt at some point. So I had Osmussen's story pulled up, um, and he, he referenced it that – um, he could return for 2022, but yep. because of, because of the injury, but that's that's definitely not yep. um, a for sure thing yet. So yep. definitely one year, which is big. Um, it's huge. If he, if he can stay healthy, I think he is someone that can really help carry the load. And like you yeah. mentioned, a uh, great fit for Bielema. You can never have too many running backs in an offense like Illinois is going to run. So um, yeah. offensive and, linemen and running backs. I mean, I'm not going to say it's it's a, a done deal by any stretch of the ima imagination, but there's enough talent on that team and the West is very winnable. So yeah. just getting, getting another offensive weapon like that's going to be huge. You yeah. know, having, having the depth, having the talent, it's, that's definitely a, a nice get. Yeah. It's been a couple sure. weeks now that uh, you could have recruits officially visit campus as well. And the Illinois has had two huge weekends already of a lot of their high profile targets. Um, again, we're not into recruiting, so we're not, um, here to give you any kind of recruiting scoops, but it doesn't take uh, a no one to see that that these are guys that Illinois really wants. So um, recruiting is really heating up for Illinois, and they're really focusing on in-state, which I think is big. So I think Bielema has done everything right. Um, once we get to August and September, we'll see if he's pushing the right buttons. But um, football is pretty – it's pretty exciting time for Illinois football, I think, just because it's yeah. a new regime. Um, and that's something else I was going to say about full capacity – is it, it's very similar to Lovey's first year. They had that sellout against North Carolina, which was the first yeah. sellout in a long time. And it was the only sellout they got um, under Lovey. But this could be a, a similar situation where it's a sold out Memorial Stadium, albeit that was a night game, which made it really cool. Memorial right. Stadium at night is awesome. Um, but a noon game on Fox, if it's a sellout, that's only good things for the program. Yep, I agree. It's going to be huge. Um, continuing with college football, probably the biggest news of the week is the college football playoff. I've heard people say the word likely. I've heard people say the word contemplating, but 
there is some sort of talks of a college football playoff expansion to 12 teams. Me personally, I've always been in the camp of it needs to expand. I would love to see 16. I thought eight is also doable. But the more I think about it, I think 12 is the perfect number. Because you're not just playing to get into the 12. You're wanting to play to get to the four. Because the top four get buys. Correct. So I think that adds a little bit to it to to throw that buy in there. Because if it's a 16, then you can just play to get to the 16 and not Correct. like just take a, a week. I'm not that, not that they would take a week off, but just play to get to this into the 16 and, and you're in, and then you can see what happens. But when you add that layer of the buy for the top four teams, Alabama might have to try a little harder there in the late weeks to, to get that buy. What do you yeah. think of the 12 team playoff? I know it well, sucks for Notre it's, Dame. It's not a surprise that you and I are on the same page again. Um, when it comes to this, I have, like you said, um, I have been very much for the idea of expansion, but my thing has always been, it's not an actual NCAA championship because not everybody has a shot to win it. And I, I understand the argument that it's not basketball, it's football. It doesn't matter you know, Northern Illinois is never really going to have a shot to win the national title. Like they would have a shot to make a sweet 16 run, you know, or final four run in basketball, something along those lines. Um, but I just always had this issue with it because they just didn't really have that chance. It doesn't matter that Western Michigan or that central Florida, whoever goes undefeated in their season, they're not going to have a shot to play in a playoff. They'd have to do that for like eight straight years. My the comparison I've always used, you know, when we've been on this four team playoff, is Illinois could go winless one season and run the table and be undefeated in the next season. Illinois is getting in the playoff, but it would take eight straight undefeated seasons for a UCF or somebody along those lines to earn up the respect to play in that. And I just never thought that's fair. Um, so I have always been, as you said, uh, in favor of a 16 team and not just because it gets you more teams, but because you have a shot to put every conference champion in it. Now, I do think that's overkill. I don't think that's that has, has ever been realistic. I am very much in favor of 12. I think, as you said, I think um, it, Yes, it does dilute the regular season a little bit, but you're still playing for those four spots. Having a buy is absolutely huge in these situations. Um, it doesn't matter what we do. There's always still going to be the Alabamas, the Ohio States, the Clemsons. There's always still going to be six to eight teams that are constantly playing in those semifinal games. That's not going to change but at least you get the option to maybe have a Cinderella story. Maybe a team like Cincinnati could have done something last this past year, you know, this past year that if they went by this rule, they would have been had two non um, power conference teams in it. Cincinnati and coastal Carolina would have potentially been in it at just 12 teams. That's not going to happen every year. You're going to get one of them obviously with these new rules. Um, But I, I love it. I think it's, I think it's tremendous. Um, the, the couple takeaways that I've, that I've had, I've thought about, I've seen other people talk about too. Um, I don't love, I read, I think I read this in like on the ringer or whoever it was or whoever posted it, but it's true. I don't love that the original proposal that they're talking about is that the first round games would all be on campuses. And then the second round games would start neutral sites, yeah. which is, I don't hate that, but I hate that for the teams to get the buy. Yeah. Like that doesn't, I don't think that works. You know, Alabama doesn't get to play another home game. They then have to go to Dallas or wherever to play their first game. I don't think that's totally fair. Um, And the other thing, 
it's funny because Jack Swarbrick, who is the AD of Notre Dame, was on this this committee involved, this four person committee. <laughs> but Notre Dame, according to this expansion p- proposal, wouldn't actually have a shot to play in the in have a buy essentially. Yes. yes. Um, which I get, I understand that, and I don't think anybody really, other than Notre Dame fans, are really going to hate that. Yeah. I, I just think it's funny that Swarbrick was on the committee. There was only four people that apparently were making these decisions. <laughs> he was one of them, and he still allowed this to be the case so i don't think you can argue it one way or the other i mean i guess you can just say the four top teams but if notre dame's not playing a conference championship it's really hard to say they're one of the top four teams at that point when you have 12 teams making the playoffs so yeah i love it i think it's great um it's not going to be several years before we see it of course with tv rights and all those stuff all those contracts and everything but uh, i think it's huge i think it's great and maybe one day we'll see the illini in it <laughs> 12 gives them a better chance than four. 12 does. (laughs) Maybe there can be like a little caveat that if Notre Dame goes undefeated, they get one of the four or something. You know, I, I have a hard time. Or Notre Dame just joins the ACC full time. I, uh, yeah, I agree with all of that. Come on, Um, Logan. That's your, that's your town now. I could, I could see that going either way. Um, I think, I think college football is probably tired of making exceptions for Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, But it's also not just Notre Dame. There are other independent football teams, um, but those independent football teams aren't at that level that Notre Dame is. Um, But I agree with you. It's just, they just need to join a conference. Um, They had their whole ordeal this year with the ACC that they were part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, They're never going to because they have their exclusive NBC rights. So that's just, that just makes that accounts for so much more money than they don't want to share it. So that's just not happening, but no, man, I, I love it. Um, I've been hoping for this for for a while. Did you ever read uh, the death to the BCS book? There was a few of them that came out a few, several years ago, back when the BCS was, was the um, postseason du jour. Um, It was written by, I I just, I think Jeff Passan, who actually uh, oh. from ESPN baseball writer, I think actually might've been one of the writers involved in this. Hmm. I have one copy here. I read it several years ago and I have just loved everything they said from that. I mean, again, that was before the playoff was a thing that was, mm-hmm. you know, back when we were only the bowl games and, and all this stuff. I think the bowl games are done. I, I, I don't, we don't need them. They're not necessary. Yeah. I, I don't think at all they're necessary. Um, it's time to move on from that. So. Logan, Give me a 12 be, team playoff. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't read a book since about fifth grade. I don't read much either, man. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so I did not catch that book. <laughs> I, I read like, I read like one a year. I'm on my first one for this year. I have a second one lined up that I might get to. Um, so I'm not, I'm not much ahead of you. So I will admit though, that the thought of getting a book and sitting down and reading it has increased lately. Um, I don't know why, but there was because you went the last 14 months and didn't leave your house. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm getting tired of my Xbox and, and my PlayStation. Um, I almost got Barack Obama's book for the sole reason that he mentions Pinckneyville. Oh, does he really? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, it's a, just one little blurb from when he was a senator in Illinois, like he um, had conversations about Pinckneyville, but huh. so I, that almost just like, all right. President number 44 mentioned Pinckneyville. I got to get this book (laughs) because I never in my wildest dreams would think that Barack Obama would know Pinckneyville, Illinois. So anyways, um, for those that haven't heard about the expansion, it's to 12 teams, top four teams get a buy, and those four teams are conference champs, right? Yes. Uh, The four best conference champs. Um, I'm looking at projections of what the bracket would have been last year and I don't see a PAC 12 team. So not every conference gets an automatic bid, but only if they're a top four team. Right. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think this is a, I don't think this is a done deal. No. Um, I think there's still things, things that would potentially change as we talked about the Notre Dame thing could potentially change and all this other stuff, but um, either way, I mean, I, I also don't think there's any restrictions on how many teams a certain conference can have. So right. I think in theory, uh, the SEC could have eight of them or whatever the number would be. So yep. 
Um, yeah, so I think, as I said, I think there's definitely still some kinks to work out with, and it's going to be several years before we actually see this come to fruition. But the fact that uh, this is actually get, making some, getting some traction, uh, I think it was the athletic that broke the story this week. Um, I, I'm all about it. And I'm not yeah. even like the biggest college football guy, but I'm all about it. I just think it makes sense for everybody. It makes yeah. sense for the, for the TV broadcasters. It makes sense for the universities, yeah. um, especially if you can get a couple extra home playoff game, home, home games for teams. Yeah. I think that'd be huge. I think you do the yeah. first two rounds at home at on campuses, and then you go to um, neutral sites after that. Yeah. I mean, FCS pulls off a 2014 playoff, so yeah. no reason FBS couldn't. That's kind of always been my argument. I, agree. Um, I got like previous season projections here. Should we go back to 2019 since that's like the last normal season or should we sure. look at 2020? No, go, go ahead. So we'll go back to 2019 since that's pre COVID and everything was kind of normal. Um, what it is normal? Well, I experienced normal last night at the restaurant that um, was pre COVID that the story would take up the next two hours. So <laughs> Champagne is back to normal. Let me tell you, <laughs> um, the buys in 2019 would have been LSU, Oklahoma, Clemson, Ohio state. Sorry. That's not in order. LSU, Ohio state, Clemson, Oklahoma. That's in order. One, two, three, four. And then the at larges would have been Georgia at five, Oregon at six, Baylor at seven, Wisconsin at eight, Florida, nine, Penn state, 10, Utah, 11, Memphis, 12. So those eight teams play each other. And then it's, it's a normal bracket. Um, interestingly enough, Alabama didn't make this one. <laughs> yeah. The one I that they was didn't thinking about make. that as, as you were reading that. Yeah. They were, they were like Alabama? 13. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it would work. Like you said, last year, uh, coastal Carolina and Cincinnati would have made it Texas A&M, Indiana, Iowa state. So some non-traditional football schools, uh, would have made it last year. North Carolina and Northwestern were the top ranked snubs. I'm looking at an ESPN article here that laid it out. Um, and then something else that I thought was interesting, um, they went like, who would have had the most appearances since this is since 2014. Take a guess at what school would have had the most college football appearances if this 12 team playoff was implemented in 2014. Oklahoma. They're in second with six. I mean, because you're asking me, it makes me think it's not Alabama, but is it Alabama? It is not Alabama. They would also have okay. six. Ohio State? The Ohio State University would have been in yeah. seven college football playoffs with the 12-team yeah. bracket. More than and, Alabama. And, I don't know that and, I would have guessed that. Well, and here's, either. I mentioned it earlier, um, but I think the, the best thing about this is, yeah, you're still going to have – the same six to eight teams yeah. playing in those semifinal games. Yes. You're going to get um, some, you're going to get a trouncing Alabama or Ohio state's going to trounce, you know, whoever gets in from whatever conference that wasn't really shouldn't, shouldn't be there. You're going to have that, yeah. but you're also giving yourself chances to have fan bases like Indiana and like Iowa state and like UCF and Cincinnati and these non football power schools that have a shot and is it likely that that indiana is going to beat clemson in the second round or whatever no it's not but is it likely that is it likely that those upsets are going to happen on the basketball court court either it's not really likely for that to happen either so but it does yeah um i just i think it's great that you know we can incorporate some more schools and get other people a shot at this that was my next point. Exactly. Um, they went down the list of schools that would have had one appearance and it's schools like Arizona, Boise yep. state, Cincinnati, coastal Carolina, Colorado, Houston, Indiana, Iowa state, Kansas state, Memphis, um, Western Michigan would have had one. UCF would have had two. So and like you're, most, you're given most those of those chances. schools, most of those schools would lose. Right. Um, but I would guess that, the numbers are there that at least one of those teams would have won a game. Right. Which would, you know, be pure bedlam for somebody, yep. especially if that was on a campus somewhere, Yep. you know, like. If uh, Coastal Carolina could have snuck into the top eight and hosted one of the bottom or last four team, nine, 10, 11, 12, I mean, yeah. it would have been crazy in, in Myrtle beach or yeah. wherever. I, 
Yeah, thanks, Myrtle Beach. Wherever they are. The last point I was going to make from this ESPN article, the Big Ten would have had the most appearances from schools in the conference, more than the SEC. Big Ten would have had 20 schools. Really? SEC would have had 19. Interesting. Yep. Yep. But next how is, many... Next is Big 12. How many different schools? Like uh, for the look, Big Ten... Big Ten would have got... Ohio Big Ten would have got Ohio State, which had seven of their... So there's only 14... Or there's only um, 13 left. So Ohio State... Penn State had four. Wisconsin had three. Michigan and Michigan State both had two. Because remember, Michigan State back in 2014 and 15, Michigan oh, State yeah. won the Big Ten. I so remember. Michigan State had two. Um, Indiana had one. Iowa had one. Oh, yeah. And that was it. I forgot about Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. there would have been 20 appearances from Big Ten schools, again, going back to 2014, I think is when the college football playoff started, right? So that's, uh, that's why they're yeah. going back to 2014. Going back, Big Ten would have had more schools in the college football playoff as a 12-team bracket than the SEC, more than any other conference. So Sign me up. Big Ten is the power football conference, mm. according to this. Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I think it's going to happen. We'll see when it does. But uh, good changes for the college football playoff. Moving on to my favorite part of the show. Logan's favorite part of the show. You want to take the lead here, Logan? Uh, of, of golf? Yes. Golf? Um, <laughs> uh, no. No, I'm good. I'm so good. the last couple of majors, we've kind of done a recap. Um, after it happens, I'll kind of discuss what happened. Um, but this week is the U.S. Open. Tees off on Thursday. So just going to give a quick little preview. I don't have anything in depth, but there are some things that I think our listeners might like to hear, like to know. Uh, nuts and bolts is it's at Torrey Pines, um, just north of San Diego, California. Um, a very, very prestigious uh, municipal course, M- municipal course, uh, which means anyone can go play it. Just, just pay, pay the greens fees and your cart fees, and, and you can get out there and play it. Not private. Um, the last time it hosted the U.S. Open was in 2008. Logan, you might remember this. I know you're not a huge golfer, but you might remember this. You know who won the U.S. Open in 2008? Name one of the three golfers you know, and you're probably going to get it right. <laughs> Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Yes. Good job. Tiger what Woods did, won the U.S. Rory Open. Win? Uh, Rory was good in the early 2010s, so 10, 11, 12, I remember probably. That one. Um, this one is the one that Tiger won in 2008. He made about a 20-footer on the 72nd hole to yep. tie – Rocco Mediate. And back then, do you remember that name? No, no, but I, <laughs> looked, I do remember. I it looked remember like you might remember that name, and I was going to no. give you major props if you knew that name. No, I don't remember the name. <laughs> but you remember what happens. Um, yes. Tiger makes the putt to tie on the 72nd hole. And back then, the tiebreaker for the U.S. Open was a full 18 holes on Monday. So they both mm-hmm. came back on Monday and played a full 18 which they tied again. So they had to go to a 19th and Tiger ended up winning um, the U S open. And then I think it was like a day or a week later, not long after it came out that he had a broken leg at that point (laughs) and like a torn ACL. And he went out and like, he was hobbling around on that Monday tiebreaker. Um, And I believe that was the last major win he had up until the masters in 2019. I might be that might not be right, but I think that sounds I'm right. Sure, it's right because it was 11 years, and that was 2008. So that was the last time that the U.S. Open was at Torrey Pines, one of the most memorable U.S. Opens ever. Um, and there are a lot of storylines uh, going into this one. Mainly, John Rahm, who we talked about last week, just a couple weeks ago, he has been cleared to play. He was pulled out of um, the tournament a couple weeks ago because he tested positive for COVID after the third round, and he had a six-shot lead. Um, He was pulled out of that tournament. He has since tested negative multiple times, so he is eligible to play, and he's the favorite to win. I got the odds pulled up. I'll run through them in a second, but he's the favorite to win. Bryson DeChambeau is the defending champ. Um, You got Phil Mickelson, who's the PGA champ, Hideki Matsuyama, the Masters champ. They're all in it, and those that 
listen to us probably will like to know there are two former Illini in the field. Thomas Dietrich has been playing pretty well over in the European tour. He's making the trip over. I think he graduated 2017 or 2018 Illini grad. Um, he played in the U S open last year at Wingfoot, had a top 50 finish. And then Dylan Meyer has been grinding away, just trying to get any start he can. He is also in the field. Um, he, he played in the U S open in 2018 at Shinnecock and he got a tw top 20 finish. Um, so he had, both of them had pretty good made, both of them made the cut and had pretty good performances, um, in their lo other lone U S open finishes. Dylan has played in two PGA events this year and he made the cut in both of them. So, um, I know it's been a, a struggle for Dylan Meyer to find status on any tour. Um, but hopefully he can go into, um, Torrey Pines and make some noise and continue to play well. Um, there. Uh, some of the favorites though, going in, you got Rom at 19 to two. Um, he is the favorite Dustin Johnson, 15 to one. He's the number one ranked golfer in the world. DeChambeau 16 to one. Then you got a couple guys at 18, uh, 18 to one Rory McIlroy, Brooks Kepka, Xander Shoffley, um, PGA champ. Uh, Phil Mickelson is 55 to one. Um, those are some of the bigger names. Tony Finau is a, a name people like 24 to one. Um, but yeah, it's um, it should be fun. Torrey Pines, they play there every year for, uh, I think it's the Farmers Insurance, which Patrick Reed won this year, and he's 28 to 1 uh, odds. So um, it tees off on Thursday. Um, I think I talked about it for the Masters. I do this pool where you pick six golfers and you drop the worst score and the best score at the end um, wins the week. And then we do a, a end of year thing. Haven't dived into that yet. Haven't dived, haven't dove haven't looked into that yet so I don't have my roster picked but um Finau is my sleeper if you would like to know Logan I'm, I knew you were curious he I is was. I would actually wouldn't call him my sleeper I I think he um I mean he'll be up there I wouldn't call him a sleeper but I wouldn't say he's my pick either um but he, he's a guy that I'm I'm really interested to see and I think could play well this weekend that's my the, my one what's what do they always say on the radio pick to click Yes, correct. Uh, my my pick, pick to, to click, click is Tony Fina. He's always so close at majors. He's like the he's like um, what Sergio Garcia was before he won that Masters. Like the best player to not win a major. Mm -hmm. It might be it might be Tony Fina right now, and this this might be the one that he gets. Did Happy Gilmore make the cut? <laughs> uh, no, um, I, I don't think so. Shooter Gilmore McGavin, Happity? Lafferty Daniel, Shooter McGavin. <laughs> no uh meet me uh, on the ninth green at nine though <laughs> that's my hey, that's my golf that. preview um for those uh gamblers out there um please gamble responsibly thomas dietrich is 350 to one to win and dylan meyer is 1000 to one to win if so are you, you saying would, that's uh, where i should put my money hey they've got odds if you want to throw a couple bucks on them that's your prerogative um that, that's totally up to you just be sure and do it responsibly okay i'll do it because you said so <laughs> um and if i, I lose money it's on you i think it's it's nbc i'm pretty sure nbc has the u.s open coverage so starting thursday um i might, might be wrong on that but starting thursday um u.s open tory pines have a recap next week um logan you got anything you want to add who is your who's your pick to click for this week's u.s open at tory pines you're going to put me on the spot <laughs> of all the names you just rattled off. You're going to put me on the spot. No, I think I thought you cool. might, I thought you might have a list pulled up since I was talking about it. I thought, it, I think it'd be cool if John Rom won. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I, I'm not saying that's my pick or anything, but yeah, I just think that'd be a, that'd be a story. He's playing. He's probably playing the best golf in the world, at least before COVID. And I, I don't know how, how COVID affected him um he, he might have not had any symptoms I, I mean i don't know he was testing negative like seven days after he tested positive so so I, that's not a bad pick i mean i know he's the favorite so yeah duh that's not a bad pick but but i could definitely see it i mean he's almost he's 19 to 2 odds which is crazy i was just looking at um the wikipedia page the last time that a non-american won at the U.S. Open, do you know when that was? Oh wow! I don't. 
I'm not good with that kind of stuff. 2014. Is it Y.E. Yang? Martin Kamer. Martin Keimer. Yeah. Keimer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Seven years Fun ago. Fun fact. Fun fact. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Dropping fun nuggets, fun facts in there. there. Courtesy of Wikipedia. Can't trust it. But Speaking of the nuggets. Says. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> sons did you buy, your, <laughs> did you buy your Sons in 4 shirt? No, no. I almost wore my Sons shirt today, but I I'm wore sure. it a couple why episodes did, ago. And why did It doesn't matter. We're, we're not bringing that out again until Larry O'Brien's in Phoenix. Oh, man. Look <laughs> at this. Look at this. Oh. Uh, you're um, cocky you don't have a baseball team to be cocky about now so you're jumping all in <laughs> all in to sun's basketball <laughs> it's basketball season it's not baseball season it's june right, it's the summer right. we're talking basketball. yeah of course of um, course who are you but yeah we'll, we'll talk about that for a little bit the, the suns did advance for nothing all i think all of the other three series are tied 2-2 i believe I so yeah. i don't have the bracket in front of me but i think they're all tied 2-2 so suns are getting a little break here before Utah and the Clippers finish their series, which is nice because Chris Paul's kind of banged up and and whatnot. But the Suns look good. I watched all four games. They looked really, really good. Uh, Jokic got um, kicked out, ejected of Game Four. Which, I don't know what happened there. That was yeah. that was all. That was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So that's the quick NBA update. Um, I think the lottery's coming up pretty soon. So the Bulls will figure out where they're going to pick in the draft. I don't think it'll be a very high pick. Um, and if it is, it go, they keep it. If not, it goes to Orlando for the um, for the trade. I already forgot the guy's name. <laughs> Vukic. Vukic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for the Vukic trade. So Bulls probably will not have a first-round pick unless they jump in, I think, to the top four. I think if it's top four, they get it. But other than that, they, um, they will not have a first-round pick. Um, Nets are kind of banged up though. Are you, do you think they're still going to make it? No, I, I am not all the way. Ankle. Yeah. Not all the way. I mean, they may get past the bucks, but I don't, yeah. I just don't see if it happening. Kyrie sprained his ankle. Harden is supposed to play Tuesday night. Again, this will be released after been, the game. So they've been very beaten up. Yeah. Yep. We'll have to see. So I just saw something come across Twitter and I saw something else earlier that I thought about mentioning, but I ended up not putting it in our rundown, but now I'm going to combine the two um, shams from, uh, is he with Yahoo or sideline or uh, stadium stadium? Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Shams. I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah. Um, something. Uh, as, this was an hour ago, but I just saw it. The uh, 2021 NBA draft combine participants and Io Dusumu is on the list. Um, which is not a huge surprise, but Kofi Coburn is not on the NBA draft combine list. But what I did see that I saw earlier that I was going to mention was he's on the G league combine correct, or something like that. So he is going to the G league combine. Io is going to the NBA combine. Is that how you saw it? Yes. And I believe it was somebody, Jeremy Werner, whoever it was tweeted something about you can, he can still, um, earn a spot at okay. the NBA draft combine. Uh, if he performs well enough at the G league combine, I don't totally know how all those things work and how they're all interconnected. Uh, but yes, that is, uh, that is how I interpreted that as well. Yeah. So Sam Vicini from the athletic, he's an NBA guy from the athletic says for what it's worth, the top, top rated players for me going to the G league elite camp will be Marcus Garrett, Derek Alston, Juwan Begrin, Kofi Coburn, and EJ Liddell. So Kofi's one of the better players going to the G League camp, but he is not currently not invited to the um, NBA draft combine. Yeah, so he was one of the – I mean, granted, I, I watch, you know, mostly Illinois basketball, but he was one of the very few names that I did recognize on that list. Yeah. Um, so, yep. That's uh, I mean, Io obviously is not a shock that he's you know invited to the combine. He's a you know first round pick, maybe yep. even a lottery pick. Um, still don't really know what's going to happen with Kofi. I mean, he's yeah. he could be he could find a spot on a sec you know in the second round. Yeah. Um, who knows? But good for yeah. him to you know at least getting that far. Yep. Yep. He's gonna have a pro career. Just don't no, know absolutely, it's be. Yeah. absolutely for sure. He'll get paid to play basketball. That's all that matters. 
living the dream <laughs> just like all of us want to i can't even get paid to do a podcast <laughs> um next topic on here so every week me and logan just kind of throw some ideas into a google document and create a little bit of a rundown and you're giving he, away our secrets he put well i mean that's kind of how shows work this oh. is a rundown here oh uh-huh. um someone put on here i don't know if it was hacked or what hashtag broom emoji oh i, I don't know what wow, that's about those are fighting words oh so, who did that we have a troll <laughs> who hacked into our i mean who our if, google doc if you could expand, I'm going to step out of the screen for a second. <laughs> uh, go I, ahead. You want, go get, you want me to go get my broom or no, I, I don't want to uh, harp on it too long. I, I think it's June. I think that uh, I've already had, I've already seen and received text messages from Cardinal fans that I've just told to relax. Uh, I got one text the other night that said the Cardinals may never win another game this season. <laughs> I said, relax. <laughs> they won um, Monday night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the it's next night. June. Um, I don't think it's it's much, much to be concerned about, but the Cardinals aren't playing well and the Cubs are playing well. Uh, but I think the biggest takeaway from that weekend, and we've talked about it, was the full capacity and Wrigley Field was absolutely yeah. rocking. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, I was going back to, I went back for a wedding. And so we were driving uh, back south on Friday and I was listening to the game and uh, I meant, I made a comment to Allison and I said, I would kill to be at Wrigley field right now. Like I've seen Snapchats. I have plenty of friends that are there and places rocking. And then minutes later is when Rizzo fought off the million pitch at bat and, and drilled one into the bleachers. Um, 14, 14 pitches, whatever, whatever. Uh, but like, I, that was just incredible. I just, I would have loved to be there this weekend. Um, you know, that's obviously that to me is the bigger takeaway than the actual outcome. Yeah. Um, the outcome is great for the Cubs and for Cubs fans. Um, but just the fact that that's where we're at and that Wrigley Field was was electric this weekend was just phenomenal to me. So, so the Cubs open their stadium fully 100 yeah. percent capacity for a weekend series against the Cardinals. What's the capacity there? Like thirty eight, thirty nine. Yeah, 000? I think so. Yeah. And I'm sure it was sold out. The Cardinals open theirs full capacity 100% Monday night against the Marlins 24,000 which Yikes. is less that's less than they've had at previous games when there was a capacity <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> so yeah, that's brutal uh, Derek Gould the beat writer for the St. Louis Post Dispatch over there said you know don't look too much into it you know country's coming out of a pandemic a struggling Cardinals team playing a struggling or pretty bad Marlins team on a Monday night. Like don't look too much into it, but less than 24,000 when you open your stadium for the first time in a year and a half, it says a lot. Yeah. It's not good. (laughs) Well, I, I mean, it was just weird watching you watch that series over the weekend and then the Cubs went to New York and played at city field. And I don't know what their capacity is. I'm sure it's on hundred percent with it being New York city right now, but um there was a lot of empty seats there. Like I was like, Oh yeah. man. And these are two first place teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, regardless, Wrigley field is always like that. It's just, that's just the nature of Chicago. And yeah. they're like that when the Cubs are terrible and they're like that when the Cubs are good, but yeah. it was just an absolute perfect storm for the Cubs this weekend. Um, sorry that it came at the hands of the injury riddled uh, <sighs> Cardinals, but uh, you know, it is what it is. And as I said, it's only June. So like there's still yeah. plenty of baseball to be played, but yeah, the Cardinals broadcast Monday night showed the upcoming schedule mm-hmm. and the Cardinals are playing the Marlins right now. They get the Braves who are also struggling. Then they get like the pirates, the Rockies, the diamondbacks. So the, so the, the, the schedule opens up a little bit for the Cardinals. So really need to take advantage. KK Kim um, coming back tomorrow or no tonight. I think Kim is starting tonight. So he's coming back from the injured list. Um, yeah, just a lot of injuries and just nothing really good happening for the Cardinals right now. If, if we're being honest, they'll I, they'll pull it together. They'll pull something out of a hat somewhere, and they'll end up with Max Scherzer or something. And well, Scherzer just went on the IL today. So oh, I didn't even see that. Okay, <laughs> don't, well, don't well, want never that. Mind. You don't you don't want that. Give me Jose um, Barrios. Pay oh pay God. for him. You're gonna need to give up a lot for Barrios. <laughs> a lot he's not a rental though well i he's just at gave least up. got a couple years right 
I just gave up Mark Melanson in a minor leaguer for him in my fantasy league. Okay, this isn't fantasy. <laughs> this isn't even 2016. I think it's crazy that we're – I mean, 2016, the Cubs traded their top prospect – for a role to, for a rental of a role as Chapman. Yeah. And now that like that just wouldn't happen now. We're only yeah. five years later. And you know, even if the Cubs, if the Cubs were in selling mode and Chris Bryant was playing like he is right now, there's no way they would get that type of return. They wouldn't get a Glaber Torres back yeah. for that type of it's a very different world we live in right now compared to even where we were five years ago. Yeah. I mean, as you can see by what the Cubs got back in the U Darvish trade over the summer or over the, the winter. I mean, that was like, it's incredible to see where we are just compared to that. So no, yeah. I, I, the, I mean, I would love for the Cubs to get Barrios too. He's Javi Baez's brother-in-law. brother-in-law. Yep. Um, but uh, the Cubs, no, they're not, they won't give up the farm for that. And yeah. I, I just, the way that trades like that happen anymore, it's a very different world. Yeah. Very different. Um, what's taking over baseball right now is this spider tack yeah. and foreign substances. And today there was a memo sent out. Um, I'm reading Jeff Passon's Twitter here. Um, 10 day pop, suspension, 10 day suspension caught, 10 with pay. Yeah. Ejection from the game, 10 day suspension with pay for anyone caught with any sort of substance from sunscreen mixed with rosin to spider tack. So they're trying to crack down on any subs, <clears throat> excuse me, any substance, and while you, while we, we took a little break here and I was reading some Twitter uh, banter here and Tyler Glass now, pitcher for the Rays, um, who just went on the IL with a uh, partially torn ulnar collateral ligament and a flexor tendon strain. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess he was speaking with some people and he very much says it's because they made this change mid season and he threw 80 pitches a different way than he's used to because he was using something um, and, and he was very vocal about them yeah. changing this mid season and not giving I, the players time to adjust. I, uh, I don't think this is being handled very well. No. Um, I, I, I get it. I listen, I get it that, that we have reached this point where they have to do something. I understand that. Um, but doing this on June 15th, and unleashing it on June 21st or whatever they, they are like, mm-hmm. you can't do that. Like that, that's just, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's yeah. not good business to make that kind of decision in the middle of your season. Um, I don't know. I, I think, I, I think it's a little overboard, but I do think this stuff has gotten out of hand. I will say yeah. that. I, I mean, this isn't, you know, the sunscreen and rosin thing when guys were doing that to get a little more control and, you know, if it was try to keep, you know, keep from hitting guys, like I get that type of stuff, but you know, obviously it's, it's gotten out of hand, but this is, I don't think it's being handled very well. Yeah. Um, and I can't blame glass now for, for saying what he said, because yeah, as I said, to do it in middle of June, uh, not even to the all-star break, but still in the middle of the season, just, that's just, that's unnecessary, I think. Yeah. But I don't really know what the other solution would be. So. Yeah, his his quote exactly was, "Do it in the off season. Give us a chance to adjust to it." But I just mm-hmm. threw eighty pitches. Then you tell me I can't use anything in the middle of the year. I have to change everything I've been doing the entire season. I'm telling you, I truly believe that's why I got hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is kind of what I just said, but that's the exact quote from him. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of all started when um, Joe West made Giovanni Gallegos change his hat because he had a little, just a little spot on his hat. And Mike Schilt had that like eight minute post game talk where people were asking him all that kinds of stuff. And, and ever since then, I feel like that's all we've seen in baseball. So really trying to crack down on this foreign substance. I feel like it's going to be hard to, hard to um, enforce. It's going to be ridiculous. I mean, Cause I think I saw Corbin Burns, like puts stuff in his hair. He's got the hair. And so he puts it in his hair and he's just rubbing his hair. Like you're pretty soon. You're going to tell pitchers that they can't touch anything. Yeah. Like you can only touch the ball and put the ball in your glove. Like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. We'll see it. It's gotten out of control, but I don't know that there's many ways to, to regulate this, but no, I'm with you. I believe that's all our sports talk. Logan gave me assignment. Logan <laughs> gave me an assignment. Um, Did you a complete couple, your assignment? A couple of days ago. I want to read the exact text. 
that Logan sent me just just to show <laughs> just to show the the viewers and the listeners how he treats me. It was kind of demanding. Um, it was kind of demanding. Oh, here we go. Thursday night at five twenty. Please watch In the Heights before we pod. Please and thanks. And then four <laughs> minutes later, that was demanding. Disregard. But you should definitely watch it. First of all, now that I read it, that wasn't demanding. You said please and it's you said please polite. twice and thanks. I was polite. Yeah. You're just asking me to watch. So, Logan, I will ponder this question on to you. Mm-hmm. As your co-host yeah. and your friend, do you believe I watched In the Heights? Um, I don't know. It depends on what you were doing this weekend. If you were busy, I can see you not doing it because I don't think a lot of people did. Um, but if you had nothing else going on, I think there's a good chance you did. I don't really know what you did this weekend. You told me at one point you were thinking about doing it on Friday, but I don't know if you did. So, um, I'm going to go with yes. You are correct. Oh, good. We watched, we watched good. it. Right. I will good. say it took two viewing sessions. We split it okay. into half a little bit. Um, okay. we watched a little more than half Friday night and then we finished it on Sunday. Okay. Um, so we could talk about it Sunday night, but the recording obviously didn't happen Sunday night. So yes, I watched In the Heights. We both, me okay. and Christy both watched In Great. the Heights. So you are our movie expert. Cr- critic. Sure. sure. Um, take it away. What'd you think? Uh, I thought In the Heights was great. I, um, I didn't know a ton about it going into it. Um, mm-hmm. I knew it was, you know, I knew it was Lin-Manuel Miranda's, you know, original um, story. Um, that he had done before Hamilton. And I knew, you know, I knew of Anthony Ramos who was in it and I knew some things. Um, I kind of knew the general background of it, but I didn't know a lot about it. I wouldn't say I was like super excited to see this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but lately, the last few weeks, as as critics and, and people have started to see it, I've heard some really good things about it. So at that point, I was I had gotten you know a little more excited for it. And I I re- I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was it was just a fun movie. Uh, it was a fun musical, a lot of catchy songs, uh, great performances. It was colorful. It was it was vibrant. Um, it was the, some great set piece, some great, great sequences, great set pieces. The, um, the pool, the pool number was, yeah. was great. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um, it was just a fun time. It was, it was a fun time at the movies. And this is something we just haven't had the last year. I've already seen three or four movies this year that are in my eyes better or equal to some of the best movies we saw all of 2020 and it's only june yeah um there are a lot of people that have said uh this movie um is successful because of hamilton yeah. or this movie was done because of hamilton yeah. which i can understand the maybe successful part but this movie was in the works before the hamilton thing was ever going to happen this movie had was supposed to come out last year. Hamilton had been recorded long ago, yeah. but and but Disney purchased it and wasn't going to drop it. They were gonna. It was just gonna be in their vault. So this movie was supposed to come out before the Disney Plus film stage production of Hamilton. So I can't totally buy that. Um, but it was just. It's just a. It's just a fun show. Yeah. Um, and I was. I was just happy walking out of the theater to see it. Um, and I just thought it was a movie that you'd enjoy. So was I, was I right? Did you, did you enjoy, did you enjoy In the Heights? Craig? Yes. Uh, yeah. I thought it was very good. I, I, yeah. I um, the, the storyline, it, it, it drew me in. Like I wanted yep. to, I wanted to see what was going to happen. Um, like agree. you, I had no In the Heights knowledge. I did not know the storyline um, with Hamilton. You know, I listened to the soundtrack hundreds of times before I saw it. So I knew the storyline I knew what was going to happen. I didn't know any in the Heights storyline, did not know any songs, didn't know anything other than Anthony Ramos was in it in the movie. And it was done by Lin-Manuel Miranda. It was his yep. first um, yep. um, musical play, whichever it was. Um, I don't know what this is classified as, I guess. Musical. Musical. Yeah. Um, and I knew that he did it long before Hamilton. Right. Um, there were some things that I kind of couldn't get past though. Um, and the biggest one was every single song sounds nearly exactly to a Hamilton song. Like ev- yeah. every single song I caught myself like, oh, that's my shot. Oh, you can tell. That's helpless. Like 
it's yeah. like he just changed the words and the the beat a little bit yeah so there's not a whole lot of difference and i know yep. this one was before hamilton so he did hamilton off of this one so this is like the original but i know hamilton so the entire movie i was almost trying to figure out which song he used from hamilton yeah to make this song but it should have been the complete opposite you know you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. no i i agree i felt the same way um, you can definitely tell that uh, he drew a lot of the same type of musical composition for it, for yeah. sure. Um, and that's kind of to be expected. I mean, he wasn't exactly, you know, he was kind of an up and coming, you know, yeah. composer, or lyricist, whatever he was doing, whatever yeah. role he had in it. Yeah. Um, yeah so th that's and that's a common thing. I've heard that from a variety of people um but that's not really to take anything away from it um right. it's you know it's still you know it's it's not hamilton um yeah. hamilton was a, a phenomenon um before it ever reached disney plus hamilton yeah. was a phenomenon on the stage um years ago um in the heights wasn't that um it was it was popular i'm i don't know what it did i'm sure it won some tonys um i believe i believe the uh abuela character i yeah. believe that's the same woman that opened uh the show on broadway and i do believe she did win a tony yeah. uh for the performance and i think it's possible she could get an oscar nomination for it too but yeah. um but i don't yeah i don't it wasn't like a universally celebrated you know performance necessarily like hamilton was um but i you know in a year that we're gonna get four five maybe even six musicals um like actual live action stage to screen adaptation musicals i think this one's going to be hard to top i really do and we're going to get a west side story later this year um we're getting uh lin-manuel miranda's directing tick tick boom um, which is coming out on netflix later this year uh dear evan hansen which is a personal favorite of mine is coming out this year and there's like one or two more um so i think it could be a really strong year for musicals but i think this is very possibly going to be the best of all of them yeah. in my opinion so yeah. i really good. enjoyed it the issue right now is that i don't think a lot of people are seeing it or if they are they're watching it on hbo max because yeah. the box office numbers for this movie are not good um that's part of this whole day and date release thing that hbo max is doing um and that could just be where we are at, you know in the world i i, I don't know that, that that's ever going to change yeah. but i do think those numbers that they're seeing the box office returns are a little lower than expected um but if you're listening to this if you haven't seen in the heights if you're at all into musicals or movies or any of that stuff um i definitely recommend it it was yeah. definitely a very enjoyable experience yeah i mean it is making some headlines and i don't want to bring it down any more than yeah than the public is um because it it is very good um but lin-manuel miranda issued an apology yesterday on twitter because people are complaining that there's not enough afro-latina representation that the latinas latinos in the film are too light skinned. Yep. Um, and, and again, I, this, I don't want to stir anything up here because that's not what we want to do here. But I mean, this is one of the things that people are talking about and, and whatnot, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a fair, it's, it's a fair criticism. Yeah, it is. And I, I don't want to, I kind of call myself out here, but I didn't even notice it when I was watching. Um, but then once I saw the headline, I was like, Oh yeah, there was, yeah, yeah. There, it was, there was very one-sided. Yeah. there um so yeah that's kind of going on but i don't think it takes anything away from the movie or, or the musical i thought it was no i thought it was fantastic um you want to give it a score did you score it uh yeah it's another 4.5 um i, I haven't got a 5.0 out of the year yet i'm sure one will come but uh it's definitely a solid 4.5 for me are you when you're scoring sure. here are you strict like 4.0 4.5 5.0 for this yes okay I, Okay, so I need to be that then. I don't care. You okay. do whatever you want to do. I was prefer. I was prepared. You can give me a, a seven out of eight if you want. I don't care. <laughs> well, if you're going on a five scale, I'll go on a five scale. I did. That's just how I've been doing it. I can be more specific if you want me to. I have all sorts of number systems. So okay, um, I'm going off of my. I use I use the app Letterboxd. Are you familiar with Letterboxd? No. Um, it is a social media site, but strictly for movies. Okay. So that's where I, you know, read and review and, and that's give their movie system. stars and stuff. And they have 
Um, yeah, essentially. So that's yeah. kind of what's what I'm using for this. Okay. Um, but yeah, 4.5. Okay. I don't use letterbox, so I'm just going to give my number. Give, this is, give this is the number. only place that it is. You can give a letter grade. You can <laughs> give it, uh, you know, you can do it out of three. You can do it out of four. You can do, um, you could call it, uh, you could do something other than stars. You could put little Craig heads or <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to do, man. I will give it a 4.2. Okay. okay. I, not, I didn't like it as much as Corel, Cruella, um, okay. which I think is the only other one that I've reviewed on here. Okay. Um, but yeah, 4.2. But much it's solid. Yeah, it was great. It's solid. Both it's, those ha- those two movies have something in common. They both do run a little long. Yeah. Um, this one, I didn't notice it as much because it's a musical. So they're all kind of tied in together. Yeah. Um, but some of the songs did drag at times, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, I agree. It was, it was solid. Yeah. Uh, definitely both of us recommend checking out in the Heights, either in theaters or HBO max. Speaking of running long, I feel like this episode might be running a little bit long. So Logan, do you have anything else that you want to, uh, want the people to know? Um, no further questions, your honor. <laughs> don't, don't give me that, uh, <laughs> that title. No, or I, uh, pressure on me. I don't have anything else. I don't think, um, you know, go Cubs, <laughs> go Illini, go, I don't know. Uh, hopefully next week, go something. we might have an assistant coach to talk about. Um, I feel like we probably might. not as long as your son, probably not as long as your sons are playing. <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, nothing off, off the top of my head to talk about next week, but uh, we'll have an episode here in the next coming days at some point. Um, you good? I'm great, good. Craig. All right. We will uh, we'll call that an episode then. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you next time. Bye.